Tech Zero is really being a sustainable company meeting a net zero goal. And, and you'll see a lot of those commitments of becoming net zero by specific years by, by various CEOs uh, across industries. But we're also using the, the term, as you mentioned, tech positive. And that's really to define how technology can be used as a lever for the whole organization to reach its net zero, and not just to reach its net zero, but to have a positive overall impact, driving business growth and accelerating innovation. Because we can't stay still. No one wants to, to stay stagnant. We're all trying to create a better future. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, and we're going to try and unravel the complexities of technology and translate them into a language everyone can understand. And today we're diving into the incredibly timely and important topic, sustainability in the tech sector. And we have a luminary to guide us through it today. His name is Motti Finkelstein and he's at Intel's Corporate Vice President of Digital Transformation. And he's here to share his insights from Intel's latest groundbreaking research survey that involve more than 2,000 top executives around the world. And we're going to discuss the concept of the sustainable CTO and why it's rapidly becoming a pivotal role in driving sustainability goals within organisations. But enough from me. Buckle up and hold on tight because no matter where you are in the world, I'm going to beam your ears all the way to New Jersey where you can join me and today's guest in conversation. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? So my name is Matthew Finkelstein uh, and I'm uh, responsible for IT or as they say internal IT at Intel. Uh, I'm uh, the CVP and uh, Chief Digital Transformation Officer at Intel, and that's my area of focus. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. One of the things that I put you on my radar was when I recently read that Intel had released a survey spotlighting data that outlines the importance of a sustainable CTO. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and explain how Intel defines a sustainable CTO and why this role is important to meeting sustainability demands across the country, because across the entire industry because I think it's something we're all hearing more about now, especially with ESG scores, etc. You know, I, I look at it as part of the evolution of CTOs and some CIOs in different organizations. It's, it's termed a little differently. Um, there was always a desire to be sustainable. Sustainability was always one of the priorities. Uh, but wasn't, let's say, as high up as it probably should have been. Uh, many components within sustainability, you know, how do we save money in certain areas, increase utilization, uh, decrease power consumption, and so on, uh, have been more, you know, historically as a an optimization uh, effort and not necessarily a sustainability effort. Now, as we, you know... As we mature and as the indus industry understands some of the impact, as well as if you take a look at how much power and how much compute uh, things require now and how much more automation and more um, you know technology is needed to do certain things, uh, sustainability has become one of the more important and most important priorities within an organization in general. Um, you can see many CEOs, um, you know, having various pledges on sustainability, and it also brought to the forefront uh, the need for a sustainable CTO, uh, because that is kind of the intersect of how business gets delivered with technology being integrated at that crossroad of technology, sustainability, and business delivery. And the research also highlighted that one of the big challenges amongst sustainability, knowledge, and innovation was that 76% of leaders actually find it difficult to combine green IT solutions with increased computing performance, and 72% have identified a knowledge gap when it comes to sustainable IT practices. So, I've got to ask, how are you at Intel addressing some of these challenges, both within your organization and externally too? 
th there's going to be a lot of work that has to be done because yeah. this is not just about skill set. It's about both understanding the technical environment, understanding the business needs, as well as understanding what options are available. Uh, and, and I can take a look at, you know, both Intel and what's happening externally. If I take a look at Intel, you know, I'm sure you're aware that you know, in, in the designing of things at Intel, we're, we're designing both in, in the processors, how do we optimize uh, power and performance? But if you take a look also at IT, we're taking an incredibly close look at how data centers are consuming power, how workloads are running. Um, there are different capabilities today with various workloads. Uh, are machines sitting idle? Are is the code that's running on them optimized? Um, historically, we may not have looked at, you know, specificity of code. As long as it ran and it gave the, the, the right results, uh, that was great, right? Because it achieved its the deliverable. Uh, but now we want a little extra. We want that, are we coding in a sustainable and optimized fashion? Are we making sure that environments that we have uh, are running in the most optimal fashion and sustainable fashion. Um, th there are various measures to do that as well. Uh, so it is a journey um, and, and it will require some modifications and a different view of various things. Um, and that's why people are still struggling because this, there's no like common footprint and roadmap for that. Um, many companies, and you know, uh, Intel, uh, one of them, is very focused on how to deliver that sustainability. You know, we're focused on uh, improving and, and having best-in-class PUE metrics. We're focused on optimizing code. We're also focused on how we deliver products to end customers uh, that will have better power performance. Um, Ratio. So all of that is that journey of sustainability that is happening both at Intel and as we see with some of our partners uh, across the board. And in recent weeks on this podcast, I think we spoke to Jenny Barovian about how Intel is leading the charge for sustainable 5G. I think we also had Daryl Adams on about inclusive technology design at Intel. So I know how important this stuff is to you guys. And Again, if we go back to that research for a moment, according to that research, I think there's 82% of senior IT leaders believe in aligning technology and sustainability strategies. So can you share a little more about why sustainable design is so important and equally how Intel is leveraging technology to reach your own sustainability goals too? You know, that, that comes back to that notion of sustainability is incredibly important but you have to understand the business and the technology and align the goals of the company. And, and what you're seeing here is really, you know, like I said, CEOs making very bold commitments on sustainability, CTOs really required to have the requirement to understand what the business needs to deliver. Um, and again, when when I think of what's happening at Intel, uh, we take a, an incredibly close look at what digital requirements there are. How do we get that coded in there efficiently? How do we take a look at what we're running today? Uh, and how do we make sure that is optimized in a way to leverage uh, the capabilities that exist today? Some of the architectures and technology, as I'm sure all the listeners are aware of, uh, have changed over the last decade. Uh, we, we looked at things differently. We, we do things more parallel. We do things in, in potentially different geos. We, so, so we have a, a much broader scope to look at, uh, and we can leverage that scope and those capabilities and make sure that we're as sustainable as possible. Um, we can also take a look at where power comes from. Uh, is it green power or not? So all those capabilities together, but first and foremost, understanding 
what the business deliverables and how best to optimize those business deliverables uh, in a sustainable fashion, that is kind of that intersect and crossroad that the sustainable CTO has to deliver in a company in the most efficient, sustainable manner. Um, things today have become uh, very complex. Uh, we have various uh, AI requirements and we, we try to, to do new things. Uh, they require a lot of uh, compute capabilities and that requires power. Uh, how do we use better efficiency cores, uh, less power cores? How do we make sure what is needed when it's needed? Uh, there are many industries that some of the power they need is only for a very limited amount of time, excuse me, even throughout the year, uh, and, and things are staying running uh, throughout. Uh, so all those views, and that's, you know, that's the main reason why, as you said, the research is saying that 82% of senior IT leaders believe in aligning technology and sustainability strategies. Not only is it a requirement for the planet, um, you know, if you think about it, it's, uh, and, and Pat said this in, uh, in a vision this year, he said, you know, his granddaughter was asking him, what 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 he's doing for for the planet, you know? What she grows up. Uh, this is something that this is not about necessarily. It's always good to save money on power, but it's also good to save the planet, or much more important to save the planet. And on this daily tech podcast, I always try and demystify some of those big buzzwords that business leaders might keep hearing uh, on a regular basis. So. With that in mind, can I ask you to share a little bit more about what you mean by tech zero and tech positive? Because these phrases keep appearing at the moment. So can you tell me about that and also how they support this shift towards a, a more sustainable ecosystem? Sure. So so tech zero is really being a sustainable company meeting a net zero goal. And, and you'll see a lot of those commitments of becoming net zero by specific years by by various CEOs uh, across industries. Uh, but we're also using the, the term, as you mentioned, tech positive. And that's really to define how technology can be used as a lever for the whole organization to reach its net zero, and not just to reach its net zero, but to have a positive overall impact, driving business growth and accelerating innovation. Because we can't stay still. No one wants to, to stay stagnant. We're all trying to create a better future, more innovative future, more capabilities, um, more business prospects, uh, and, and improvement for you know whatever industry we're in. So the tech zero is kind of step one. Uh, tech positive becomes step two with understanding the, the business and really achieving all the new goals with a tech positive. Uh, I foresee that this is going to be a journey. You know, maybe we'll afterwards we'll have tech positive plus uh, and tech positive plus plus or whatever the term will be at the time. Um, but again, it's th this is going to be a journey. Uh, we have to, to, to reach certain levels, uh, you know, just like uh, when people go to, to school. They, they have to, usually people have to pass uh, first grade or elementary school before high school and college and so on. And another big stat is 79% of IT leaders are aiming to become sustainability leaders within their organization. So a question I've got to ask is, what attributes or skills are, are, are there that are, are considered key to this role in this emerging and evolving landscape? Is there anything that particularly stands out? Is it, is it different from what those traditional skills were? You know, sk skills in general are all about education and, you know, Education, w w specific education comes with prioritization. So now that, that we said sustainability is, is taking a much higher priority, um, we have to make sure that both the CTOs and, and CTOs are getting educated themselves as well as making sure staff, the developers, the infrastructure people, et cetera, are getting more developed, you, you know, more educated in that, in that space. And, and that's really the skills, the skills are the understanding of what can be done, 
what needs to be measured, how it can be measured, what are the incentives that that people need and and they need to follow in order to achieve better sustainability goals. Uh, for example, um, and I think I, I may have mentioned this before, uh, how do we architect uh, new applications? Uh, how do we code new applications? Uh, what type of um, performance cores, uh, you know, infrastructure they end up using? Uh, are we using various things? Are they powered on all the time? Are they powered, you know, only when we need them? How can we keep them on but only leverage and and still use some of the items? Uh, and and if you want to go beyond that, is what power sources are we using for specific environments? So all these items are really things that we're we're taking a close look at uh, at Intel and and of course, across the industry, uh, as well as trying to understand what are those real good metrics. So I mentioned earlier, you know, POE, uh, PU, um, you know, so I can say, hey, we, we achieved a, a specific grid environment, an amazing PUE of 1.06, which is truly amazing and industry breaking. But, you know, is that the only good metric? Is that one of the metrics, uh, what makes sense, and those incentives are also very important. Do we start giving developers um, potentially carbon credits instead of money? Uh, so, so, so there are all these thoughts and conversations across the industry uh, in order to really mature this environment. So that understanding and the skills to understand and the knowledge. Uh, all around sustainability is really what's required for the sustainable role, and, and it's still evolving. And the report also indicated that 84% of CEOs and CSOs, CCTOs, as the CCTOs as pivotal when driving sustainability in organizations. So how do you see this evolving over the next decade, particularly with the rising importance of ESG metrics? I appreciate it. It is a big question because it only took eight months for ChatGPT to completely change everything. So ten years is a long time. But how do you see things evolving? Well, well, well. Let's let's think about some interesting, you know, things we see in the industry. We see CIOs and CTOs much more involved in businesses. We actually recently saw some CIOs and CTOs become CEOs. Um, Things are much more interconnected today than they've ever been before. And where do you see, where do you have a lot of that visibility? You have that visibility in central organizations that essentially service um, the company as a whole. Uh, and if I look specifically at CTOs and CIOs, um, they, you know, if the in order to be successful, they, they need to understand their businesses. They need to understand what can talk to what, what can leverage what, where are the, what's called the peaks and valleys of their various businesses. How do they make, make things work across the board? And, and that's why they become incredibly pivotal in sustainability because of that broader view across the company. Um, how do I leverage uh, componentry and resources that I have uh, that potentially one business may need now, another business may need later? It's that understanding that can really be incredibly helpful in making a company much more sustainable and you know with the rising importance of ESG metrics uh that's one of the keys to to success actually you know not just for us for mainly for future generations uh that are it's becoming really critical for now I can't thank you enough for sharing your insights and expertise but before I let you go I also like to find out a little bit more about my guests and the path that they took in their career and what led them here so if I was to ask you 
to look back on your career and bearing in mind that none of us are able to achieve any degree of success without a little help along the way. Maybe somebody sees something in us, somebody mentors something in us, and also there's that need for continuous learning that all results in, in getting us where we need to be. So if you look at your career, can you provide some example on maybe people and methods that have, have helped you get where you are? Over the years, I learned that you can always learn from people. Yeah. Just look around you. There are so many people around you, and someone is always really good at something or a couple of things. If you take the time and understand what people are really good at that you may not be as good and learn from them, I think it's, it's an incredible asset. And, and the more people you meet, I, I, I learned a lot, you know, uh, I can start with uh, my parents, my colleagues, my bosses, my mentors, uh, the list can go on and on. Uh, but I, I'll give a couple of uh, interesting examples uh, that, that stuck with me. Uh, you know, when I was a child, uh, my, my parents used to tell me that I had two ears and one mouth, so I should uh, behave accordingly and listen twice as much as I speak. Um, but but in, in my career life, uh, you know, as a technologist and, and a person that both really loves technology but also loves the business that technology enables, I... I writing things. I remember uh, when my, my first boss, uh, her name was Alice, uh, she, she wrote something that I, that I was writing, uh, some big RFP that needed a, a town hall review. And she goes, I have a Eng- degree in English, but I don't understand the word that you wrote. This is, you know, technicese or something, but it's not English. You really have to make sure that people understand what you're saying. You, you have to explain it and, and mean what you write and, 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 and write what you mean and, and just speak in plain language that people can relate to and respond to. Um, and I will say that I took that really to art. I, you know, I rewrote the whole thing and, uh, and the person that ended up reviewing it, who I was told was going to, you know, critique it to death, only had one comment at the end. And there, there are many such examples of people with different skill sets and different disciplines uh, that over the years, uh, you know, I learned from. Uh, I had another case of uh, one of my bosses, we, we were making a huge change and the green zones or in other words, the, the allowable downtime of the environment was once in three months for four hours, and we had some challenges then. And then the person and, uh, and then the guy said to me, step back, have a cup of coffee, think about it. Don't stress because of it, because then you won't reach the right conclusions. And of course, we, we stepped back, we, we got to the right conclusions, and we were able to, to address uh, the issues, and, and we were back up within those four hours that happened once every three months. So I'm not, I'm not giving more specifics because it was actually in a, in a military uh, installation. But um, many things I learned from my staff, colleagues, bosses. Uh, it, I, I think the key is really to, as well as books, uh, the key is really to pay attention where people are good at, what people are good at, and to learn from that. What a great answer. There's someone that says on this podcast every single day, learn something from every person you meet and talk about technology in a, a language that everyone can understand. I absolutely applaud everything you just said. And for anyone listening wanting to find out more information about you, about the work you're doing at Intel, maybe explore some of the topics we talked about in more detail or check out the report we've referenced. Where would you like to point everyone listening for everything? So, so please take a look at intel.com slash sustainability for any information about what we discussed today, as well as feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm there, Matty Finkelstein. I'll be glad to connect. Well, again, a huge thank you for coming on, for spotlighting the key challenges and opportunities throughout this transition to net zero goals. It's a big topic at the moment. And uh, there's so many different challenges and some great stats in that survey. So I do ask people to check it out. I will 
post a link to that too. But more than anything, just thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Neil. What a huge thank you to today's guest for sharing his insights and helping us understand the profound transformation that the role of the CTO is undergoing, especially around steering organisations towards sustainability. Because as tech leaders, the onus is upon us to combine innovation with responsibility. And today's conversation for me has been an important step in that direction. And I think another big takeaway as we navigate these complex technological landscapes is crucial that we continue to learn from each other and talk about technology in a language everyone can understand. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything we discussed today. Anything you want to add to the conversation, send me an email, send me a direct message. And if you'd like to ask a question or come on the podcast, you can do all that too. And my door is open to each and every one of you. Just send me an email, techblogwriteroutlook.com. If you'd like to connect with me on social channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. I do have a number of conferences coming up that I'll be attending uh, from VMware to Web Summit. So if you're attending any of these, send me a direct message. Let's meet, have a coffee, have a beer. It'd be great to meet some of you face to face. But that's it today. So thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Yeah.